click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about a real-time CPU algorithm known as Earlier Deadline First or EDF algorithm. We will see that how this differs from a rate monotonic real-time CPU scheduling and how it could be acted as an optimal solution theoretically but practically due to the cost of context switching and interrupt handling. While we are using this earliest deadline first or ETF CPU scheduling algorithm, we can assign dynamically priorities according to their deadlines. Thus, which have a shorter deadline will give in the higher priority and the later deadline will give in the lower priority. Now this priority can be adjusted within dynamically of the process running in the CPU. Under EDF policy, when a process becomes runnable, it should announce its deadline beforehand to the system so that this deadline requirement can be adjusted and to reflect the priority of a new runnable process. Now it is in contrast with the rate monotonic CPU of real-time scheduling which has a fixed priority for the entire process execution. Now we will see an example that how ETF will actually run. Let us consider the example of a process which have a period of 50 and a processing time of 25 and end the process which has a deadline or period of 80 and a processing time of 35. So now we were calculating the CPU utilization of our both. Combinedly, the CPU utilization is almost about 94% that leaves a 6% CPU available for the remaining cycles. So we can allocate this to processes using this EDF algorithm. Now, here the priority is depending on the deadline. So the first deadline of the process P is 50 and the second one is 80. So the shorter deadline period is P1. So we will begin the execution with P1. So at first, P1 is beginning its execution. As it has a processing time of 25 milliseconds, so it will finish its execution. So at 25 milliseconds, P2 will arrive. Here, for rate monotonic algorithm, we have chosen to P1 to preempt it at the end of 50 millisecond as the next period starts from there. But in this EDF algorithm, we will let P2 continue its execution and complete it till 60 millisecond. As the next deadline of P1 is 100 millisecond, that is 50 plus 50, and the next P2 deadline is 80. So P2 is now having the higher priority than P1. Whereas in rate monotonic algorithm, it is a fixed priority that P1 is always higher than P2. So P2 will now finish its completion at the end of 60 millisecond. So at the end of 60 millisecond, P1 will again arrive. Now P1 will finish its execution of 25 millisecond that is 60 plus 20 that is 85 and that is less than its deadline requirement of 100 millisecond. Now P2 will arrive. Now P2 has a deadline of 80 plus 80 160 and P1 has a deadline of 50 plus 50 plus 50 150. So that is why P1 is having a higher priority. So P1 will be given the processing of CPU again. Now P1's deadline is 200 whereas P2's deadline is 160. So here P2 will be given the CPU to finish its execution. In this way, P1 will again be scheduled and P2 will again be scheduled. So EDF become optimal for this process allocation. 
Unlike rate monotonic algorithm, ETF does not require a process to be periodic nor requires that the processing time should be always constant and equal to the CPU burst time. It only requires that the process should announce the deadline to the system before handoff scheduling. In this way, theoretically, earliest deadline first algorithm becomes optimal that it can produce a 100% CPU utilization and also the processes using this algorithm schedulation can complete their deadline. But in practical, 100% CPU schedulation is not possible because the cost of between the context switch and interrupt haggling occurs in this type of scheduling. So that is all for this video. Thank you for watching it. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.